In the last video, we went ahead and we cleaned up the cave demo scene. Um, I went ahead and saved the scene with a new name just so that I could leave the original alone and not mess with it. I also went ahead and removed the matinee actor that was already in there and the cameras. So if I come over here to my scene outliner and do a search for camera, there shouldn't be anything. If I do a search for matinee, again, there shouldn't be anything. So I've got myself a blank scene. If I go ahead and I play this, by hitting Alt and P, you see that no matinee plays. It's just uh, my sort of camera controller just flying around the scene. Okay, cool. All right, so we've got a blank slate. We can go ahead and get started. So when creating new matinees, the first thing that you want to do is create a matinee actor. All right, and the way to do that is actually pretty easy. If we go over to our placement browser over here, or our edit mode over here, We'll, uh, we'll go down to all classes and we could actually just do a search so let's just start to type in matinee and there it is there's a matinee actor and it's an actor just like placing a light in your scene or a static mesh or anything like that so and it doesn't matter where you place it in the scene it could be like way over there at the end of the cave it could be over here it could be wherever it doesn't matter so I'm just gonna go ahead and drag and drop it and I'll just move it up here so that I can see it a little bit easier all right, so there's our matinee actor. The next thing I like to do, this isn't mandatory, but I like to do this. I like to rename it. So that, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to the details panel, and I'm going to call this matinee actor underscore, uh, let's call it camera, or we call it cinematic. Cinematic. Cool. That way, if you have a scene or level where there's a lot of matinees, and that could actually happen, I've had that happen before, where I'll have a whole bunch of matinee actors, you want to make sure um, that they have quick, easy, readable names that are make it much easier for you to be able to tell what's going on when you have a ton of this stuff. Okay, so now that we have a matinee actor, we can actually open it up. So if we go over here to matinee, and we go down here, we'll see a list of our different matinees. And let me show you how that works. If I go ahead and I take this matinee actor and I start making a bunch of copies of it, watch what happens. If I come up here to matinee, you'll see that down here I've got my list of different matinees. So if I had like say 10 matinees in the scene, I would see them all listed here and it'd be very quick and easy for me to select them. So I'm just going to delete those copies that I made don't need those we'll just work with one for the purposes of this tutorial I'm gonna to go to matinee actor click on that and that's gonna open up the matinee editor and this is what we saw in the previous video where there was a whole bunch of stuff okay so this is what you'll probably see by default or something like this where you have a track view down here that's completely empty and that's because we don't have anything we haven't told unreal hey we want to go ahead and animate this or we want to go ahead and animate that Unreal doesn't know yet, we haven't told it. So the first thing that you want to ask yourself before doing anything is, well, what do I want to animate? Do I want to animate a light turning on and off, or maybe the colors of a light changing? Um, do I want to animate some particles and make them turn on at a certain time, or do something at a certain time? Well, we can animate a whole bunch of stuff in Unreal. I'm not going to get into every single potential possibility of uh, animation situations we can end up in. I'm just going to go ahead and animate a camera because uh, a lot of times that's what you want to do. You want to animate a camera fly through a scene or maybe some certain cameras. Maybe there's some actors that are talking in the middle of the scene in between a level transition, maybe like a cut scene in a game or something uh, where the main character is talking to say uh, some supporting character or maybe a villain or something like that. You want to animate some cool looking cameras around them in their conversation. So the way I'm going to do this is pretty simple. I'm just going to go get a camera actor. So here's a camera. I'm going to drag and drop this into my scene. Now the camera does matter where it's at. And the cool thing about cameras is, uh, as I've said before, when you have a camera selected, you get a little camera preview in the bottom right of the viewport. See that? So if I take this camera and I start to rotate it, you can actually see the point of view of the camera in the level in that little preview. And that's super useful for when you're doing camera animation and you need to know what's going on or what your camera's looking at. Okay, so I've got my camera. Another thing I like to do, not necessary, but I like to do this, is I like to rename my cameras. So I'm going to call this camera 
one, right? Or a camera far away shot, or camera distance shot, camera close up, character A, whatever it is. In this case, I'm just going to call it camera one. And now what we need to do is we need to add the camera to the matinee. Now we can go ahead and place the camera wherever we want. So let me do that first. I'm going to take this camera, and there's a couple of ways that we can do this. Uh, you could take the camera in the viewport. I'm just going to switch to unlit mode so that you don't see that crazy bloom effect. And um, probably the simplest way, to, one of the simplest ways to do this is you can take the camera and you can move it around. And uh, let's decide on what we want to look at. Say we want to look at this statue that's over here. And if I switch back to lit mode, switch to game view, you can see that I'm looking at this cool looking uh, statue here that's holding this sphere that's got these cool looking particles. Let's kind of focus on that. That looks pretty interesting. So let me grab my camera. So there's two ways that we can do this. We can either take the camera and just manually move it around and then rotate it into position and using the little preview on the bottom we can sort of kind of finagle this into position and try to get it to where we want it to be but maybe that's not the way we want to work I mean sometimes I actually do that but there's actually another way that we can do this a little bit easier with the camera selected I'm gonna go up here to this little arrow icon next to the perspective button and that's my viewport options uh, going down here, I can go to Lock Viewport to Actor, and I can select this camera, Camera 1, which is the currently selected uh, item. So I'm going to do that. Now my point of view inside the viewport has changed to that of the camera. And this is a really powerful way of placing and moving cameras, because basically, I just move around the same way that I move around in the regular editor viewport, and I can position the camera exactly how I want. This is actually my preferred method of moving cameras, putting them in position, orienting them, and stuff like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this camera right here. Uh, something like this. And you'll probably want to switch to game view by hitting G on the keyboard. That way you can see what, uh, what the final outcome is going to look like. So it'd be cool. Maybe I'll just have a camera that fades in right here and just kind of looks up like this and gets that cool lens flare effect right there. And this will be cool. We'll keep this kind of in the lower third portion of the screen. It's a better composition than doing this. So I'll keep this like this. And this camera will kind of slowly pan up like this. So using this uh, viewport uh, actor locking method is a great way of kind of just quickly going in and, and blocking out what you want to do. So you can just move with the mouse yourself and kind of start to give yourself cool ideas about what kind of camera animation you want. Obviously, you would storyboard this stuff in a real project. Right now, I'm just doing a quick tutorial in the moment kind of thing. But, uh, but still, you can come in here and kind of look at this and go, hey, you know what? That's a cool shot I didn't think of before. Let me do that. So I'm going to start the camera maybe about here so we see the orb and the face a little bit of the statue in the top right corner. And when we finish this, we're going to end up with something like this where the face and the orb is at the bottom right. And we get kind of that hot spot up here, kind of the center of interest there. looks pretty cool. Okay, cool. So we're going to do that. So I'm going to leave the camera here because this is where I want it. I'm going to go over here back to the viewport options, go to lock viewport actor, and unlock camera one. And that's going to release our viewport from the camera. Okay, cool. So there's the camera. It's in a new position. And that would have been a little bit harder and would have taken longer to do had we been using just like the move tools and the rotate tools and stuff. All right, cool. So camera one is in position. Nice. All right, I'm going to end this video here. And in the next one, we'll move on to the next step.